Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at available for sale securities, specifically debt available for sale securities. In the prior sessions, we looked at the type of investments that a company could have, could be a debt investment or an equity investment. And now we are focusing on the debt investments. Under the debt investments, we could have them as held to maturity. And this is what we discussed specifically in the previous recording. In this recording, we'd look at available for sale. In the, in the next recording, we look at trading securities. So what are available for that securities? And specifically here, we are dealing with debt, not equity. Well, these securities are either not held to maturity and not for trading. What does that mean? The two extreme of investment in debt is this. You can either hold them until to mature. Held to maturity, this is what we talked about in the prior session, is you hold them until they mature, until the bond mature. It means you hold them till the end. Or you can trade them. Trade them mean you, you plan to sell them in the near future, like flipping them. Well, guess what? Available for sale, it's not trading, it's not held to maturity, it's some someplace in between. I'm going to hold it. I might sell it if the price is right, but I have no plan to hold it forever, and I don't, I'm don't. i not intent to sell it in the near future, flipping it. Now, how to report these investments? Once you decide it's available for sale, you would report them at fair value. And the most important thing we're going to be focusing on in this session, and I believe that's the most important thing to learn, is how to make the adjustment, how to adjust those securities to market be because they are reported at fair value. Since they are reported at fair value, it means we're going to have unrealized holding gain or, and losses. And because we have unrealized holding gain and losses, those will be reported in other comprehensive income, OCI. In other words, they are reported on the balance sheet as part of equity. Now, you might be asking why. Well, why is this? Available for sale, you don't plan to sell them in the near future. It means they should not be affecting your income. That's the purpose. You're going to hold them for multiple period, but through those multiple period, they may go up in value, down in value, up in value again, down in value, more down, so on and so forth. You don't want those fluctuation to affect your income statement as of yet. So you park them in OCI. And once you sell them, well, you'll have to report them on the income statement and make a reclassification, which we'll talk about in a separate recording. But the point to remember is available for sales securities adjustments are reported in other comprehensive income. Just I want to make sure you understand this and we're going to actually work an example. And since it's a bond, we're going to amortize the bond, amortize any discount and any premium. The best way to illustrate this concept is to take a look at an example. Adam Corporation purchased Farhat Lectures 100,000, 10% five-year bond, on January 1st, 20X0. The bond pay interest on July and January, so it's semi-annually, Adam paid 108.11 to yield 8%. Simply put, the bond was sold at a premium because the face value is 100,000. The bond is paying 10%, but 10% uh, it's yielding 8%. What does it mean to yield 8%? It means the market is earning 8%. However, the bond is paying 10 and that's why you pay the premium. So simply put, Adam will debit that investment, which is an asset. Now, remember, we are dealing from the investor's perspective, not from the issuer. There's a one whole recording about when a company issue a bond at a premium or a discount, go to my bonds chapter. And Adam will credit cash 108, 111. What we paid for the account, what we paid for the what we paid for the investment. Now, what we will do next is create an amortization schedule. We have $8,111 as a premium. So we're gonna have the carrying value of the bond, 108,111. We're gonna have a column for how much cash we're gonna be receiving each period. It's yielding 10% annually, 5% semi-annually. So the investor would receive $5,000, we have to compute interest revenue. Well, first let's compute the cash. The cash is taking the face value of the bond times the stated rate times one half or six divided by 12 because it pays interest semi-annually. That's where the cash 5,000 is coming from. Interest revenue, how do we compute interest revenue? We'll take the carrying value of the bond as of the beginning of the period times 8% times one half or six twelve. So the interest revenue is 4,324. The difference between those two is the premium we are going to amortize this period, which is $676. This is going to reduce the bond carrying value to 107,435. The difference is 676, the difference between the cash and the interest revenue. Then we reduce the carrying value because a premium bond starts above, above 
face value and it will go down as we are amortizing the bond. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to start to journalize the entries. Before we journalize the entries, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. Whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, I don't replace your CPA review course or your accounting course. I'm a useful addition to your to your to your education. My motto is saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time by providing resources such as lectures, multiple choice practice, true false questions. And this is a list, a partial list of all my accounting courses, including intermediate, audit, tax, governmental, so on and so forth. My CPA material are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Gleam, and Wiley. I give you access to 1,500 previously released actual AI CPA questions with detailed solution in their original format. So if you're studying for the CPA exam, don't you don't want to miss those. Also, if you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendations. Like this recording, share it with others. It helps me a lot. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at the first journal entry when we receive the first $5,000, which will be July 1st, X0. So we would receive $5,000, and this is the information that we need to journalize the entry. We debit cash, 5,000. Credit the investment. We don't credit the premium here. We credit the investment to reduce it, and we credit interest revenue for the 43.24. Now, on December 31st, which is one day before we receive the payment, we have to accrue the interest. So what do we have to do? We have to accrue 5,000 worth of cash as interest receivable. We have to credit the debt investment, reduce our debt investment carrying value by 703, and we record interest revenue of 4297. Simply put, the following day, we would receive the cash for this 5,000, we debit cash credit receivable, but this journal entry takes place December 31st, 20X0, just to show you how we will accrue the interest. Now, it's very important to understand how we make the fair value adjustment, extremely important. Like what I'm going to be doing now, this is the important part about fair value adjustment or adjusting the fair value of the investment or invest in the portfolio, investment the portfolio to fair value or reporting things at fair value, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of fair value terminology going on, going on here. So this is December 31st. TX1 value of the bond on the books, 106,732. You are told the fair value of the bond is 104, and these are available for sale securities. This, this one is available for sale security. What do we have to do now? So I'm going to give you a few rules. Please write them down. Please make sure you are aware of this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to adjust your investment or your portfolio to market. How do you do so? Well, you're going to have two accounts. You're going to have two related accounts, one called fair value adjustment and the other one it's going to be called unrealized gain slash loss and specifically i'm going to call it here equity and the word equity is important because this is available for sale and the adjustment goes to equity so we're going to have those two accounts what goes into those two accounts please listen to me carefully what you do, first you compute whether you have a loss or a gain. And you should be able to know whether you have a loss or a gain based on what is your fair value and what is the amortized cost. Here the amortized cost is 106,732, but if you want to sell your bond today, you're going to get 104. What does that mean? It means you have a loss of 2,732. Simply put, the difference between what you can sell the bond for, what you have it reported on the books. How do you adjust this bond? Well, you have those two accounts. If you have an overall a loss, listen to me carefully. If you have an overall a loss, fair value adjustment should have a credit balance. And I said balance, not adjustment, a credit balance. And the credit balance should be for the amount of the loss. How much is the loss? The loss is 27.32. Simply put, you would say my balance, not my entry, my balance should be a credit balance of 27, 27.32. This should be my balance. Now, what should be my entry? Well, my entry, depending on what is my pr pr prior balance is, because fair value adjustment could be either a contra asset it could be reducing your asset it could be an adjunct asset sometimes it's going to increase your investment sometimes it's going to reduce your investment but the balance should be 2732 now for this example we assume that our prior balance is zero because this is year one 
the so first you start with your fair value then from your fair value after you input whatever you need to do in fair value you will determine your the other corresponding entry whether it's a debit or a credit let's do the fair value first well if you need a balance of 2732 okay and you have a zero balance in that account from the beginning so you need to credit 2732 so you need to credit 2732 because you have a prior zero balance you will come up with 2732 as a credit balance which is because it's a loss the the corresponding debit or credit to this adjustment is to the unrealized gain now remember losses unrealized gain slash losses losses will have a debit balance so if you credited fair value you're going to debit unrealized loss 2732 and your balance will be 2732 so this is the balance we should put the balance in a different color just to kind of illustrate the word balance because that's important so this is the balance 2732 this is your balance and in green is your entry therefore i will credit fair value adjustment 2732 debit unrealized holding gain or loss 2732. now this is easy because i had no prior balance okay now we're going to work a few examples that i'm going to show you when you have a prior balance especially when you have a complete portfolio let's take a look at an adjustment for a portfolio of that securities portfolio means more than one security whether you have and happens to be two securities here but whether you have two 200 or 2000 it all work the same way we have an economic integration bond and a youtube core bond the economic integration bond has a cost amortized cost of 90,500, the fair value of 101,300. the youtube has a cost of 200,000, fair value of 175 so we have a gain on the economic integration forum a loss on the youtube overall we have a portfolio loss of 14200 and we're going to assume this is a first year adjustment so the there's no prior balance it means we have to have remember this is a loss what did i tell you i told you we have a fair value adjustment account and we have uh, unrealized gain slash loss equity account so since we have a loss of 14 to 14,200 we should have a credit of 14,200 as a balance then what do we have to do we have to determine the adjustment well since we have a zero balance the adjustment will be a credit of 14,200 a debit of 14,200 to have a loss of 14,200 okay so this is just basically like the prior example that I just showed you so notice we credited uh, we debited a loss of 14,200 credited fair value adjustment now make a note of this but let me show you on a timeline what does it look like simply put on a timeline if if your portfolio is zero it means you have no gain and no loss now you are standing at negative 14,200 so make a note of this and write jot this down that you are on a timeline you are negative 14,200 let's assume on march 1st 20x1 um we sold this bond the amortized cost was 91,200 we sold it for 94,000 we actually sold this bond so we removed one bond from our portfolio well what do we do we received cash 94,000 we removed the bond at amortized cost 91,400 and we sold it 2,500 more than the amortized cost therefore we have an actual gain this is a realized gain this is different than this gain okay now later on in another session we would learn something about reclassification adjustment but we'll talk about that later simply put the gain on the sale goes on the income statement versus unrealized gain for available for sale securities goes on the equity section of the balance sheet now let's go to year two in year two here's what's going to happen we still have only one bond and that's the youtube bond they have an amortized cost of 200,000 fair value of 193 so overall for that year we have a real unrealized loss of 7,000 remember what we have in the prior year in the prior year we have available uh, i'm sorry fair value adjustment with a balance of 14,200 from the prior year and we had the unrealized gain slash loss equity and that had a 14,200. Our portfolio has a loss of exactly 7,000. What does that mean? If we have a loss of 7,000, it means we have to adjust our portfolio to show a loss of 7,000. What does that mean once again? It means our fair value should have a balance of 7,000. 
This is what we're saying. Exactly, this is what we're saying. We should have a balance of 7,000. Well, what did we have in the prior year? Let's go back to that time, uh, the line uh, line numbers. We had negative 14,200 negative as a balance, 14,200. What happened now, we, we still have a loss, but our loss did improve. So we were at negative 14,200. Now our loss is 7,000. Simply put, we move to the right. We move to the right 7,200 unit. What does that mean? It means we have to debit our fair value adjustment. Let me put the adjustment in, adjustment in a different color. We have to debit our fair value adjustment 7,200. The credit goes to the unrealized holding gain or loss. When we do that, we have a balance of 7,000 in fair value and we have a balance of 7,000 under unrealized holding gain or loss. What we did on the on the number line, we moved to the right. Every time we move to the right, we are going to debit fair value adjustment in credit unrealized holding gain or loss. Simply put, we still have a loss. We are still below zero. This is negative 7,000, but we moved from negative 14,200 to negative 7,000. Therefore, when we move to the right, okay, it, 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 this, this, is not, this is not anywhere in your textbook. We debit fair value adjustment, we credit unrealized holding gain or loss. Now let me make another scenario. Let's assume in year, uh, this is X1, let's assume in year X2, X2, our portfolio has a cost of a million dollar worth of portfolios and a fair value of one million and I'm gonna make it $1,000. What does that mean? Why did I use large numbers? Because large numbers are useless. What you're looking for, you are looking for the difference in the overall portfolio. The difference is I have a gain of 1,000. This is what I'm trying to show you. What does that mean if I have a gain of 1,000 in the following year, year X2? It means I moved from, I moved from negative 7,000, I moved to the right, to positive 1,000, okay? What does that mean from a journal entry perspective? So I'm gonna, again, do the fair value adjustment here. From the prior year, I had 7,000 as my balance. So I'm gonna remove this. This is the balance, just, it's the same thing. I just keep it up. 7,000 is the balance. And unrealized gain and loss, I have a debit of 7,000. This is from the prior year. So the corresponding other account, unrealized holding gain or loss, equity, I have a debit balance of 7,000. Now, what do I have to do? Since I have a gain, remember, if I have a gain, I have to have a debit balance and fair value. It means my debit balance should be a thousand. Okay, and my, if the debit balance is a thousand, the credit balance here should be a thousand. Okay, what is the entry that I need to make in 20X2 to make that balance a thousand? Here, what I have to do, I'm moving more to the right. I'm gonna have to debit fair value 8,000 and credit unrealized holding gain 8,000. Simply put, in year X2, 8,000 and 8,000. What happened if I do debit fair value 8,000? I'm gonna be left with a 1,000 debit balance, which is it's reflecting my gain of 1,000. And if I credited unrealized holding gain or loss 8,000, I'm gonna have an 1,000 credit balance, which is this is what I need to show. I have a 1,000 of a gain. Then again, in year X3, you look at your total portfolio cost, total portfolio fair value. You might, in X3, you might go further to the right if your portfolio have more than a thousand in gain, or you might go, for example, from a thousand back to 200. You would still be positive, but you are worse off than the prior year. Then you will debit unrealized holding gain or loss credit fair value for 800 for that example. How do you report things on the income statement and balance sheet? On the balance sheet, we're gonna accrue any interest receivable. If there's any interest receivable on the bond, we're gonna report the investment at fair value, for example, 193,000. And we are also going to have under stockholders equity, the other, com other comprehensive loss, which happens to be in our example, 7,000, 7, um, sorry, it should be not 7,200, it should be the unrealized loss should be 7,000, not 7,200, 7,000, the adjustment is 7,200. On the income statement, we will show any interest received, whether it's cash or accrued. And remember, we sold 
the economic integration for an economic integration bond and we had the realized gain of 2500 this is not all about available for sale securities for available for sale securities you also need to learn about reclassification which is I have a separate recording for this and we need to talk about impairment when those securities are impaired how do we record for impairment what should you do now you should go to farhatlectures.com and work mcqs multiple choice questions look at additional resources to learn more available for sale health to maturities trading securities don't shortchange yourself my resources will help you do better give me a try give me a month give it a try you like it you keep it you don't you cancel that's your risk invest in yourself this is a long-term investment good luck study hard and of course stay safe